So I'm pretty excited about today. Today is an unboxing and review of my GNL guitar. If you guys remember, I did some videos where I drove to California and I was able to interview the uh, the guys at GNL and do a factory tour. And while I was there, I ordered a custom GNL guitar. So some of you watching this video will probably know what this is. Some of you don't. Here we go. I'm gonna do the case candy first. So the first thing we got is uh, the man may be gone, but his spirit is still with us. And then there's a picture of Leo Fender's chair. I got to sit in this actual chair at his desk. They let me check out everything at his desk. I would say it's definitely one of those experiences in my life where I was, uh, like I got goosebumps. I'm getting a little bit right now that it was just such a cool thing to be um, sitting somewhere where somebody like Leo Fender had created so many things. The next thing in the case is a key for the case and some Allen wrenches. You get three Allen wrenches, obviously for the bridge and the truss rod. And then you get this black envelope. So let's see what comes in this. Okay, so first thing, you get a certificate of authenticity. And it's signed by Phyllis Fender, Mrs. Leo Fender, honorary chairman. You get some instructions on how the truss rod works. You get a warranty card that you gotta fill up. And then of course you get the specification sheet. I'm gonna read you my specifications. Now GNL carries every kind of wood you can think of. And I told them I didn't care what it was made out of as long as it was light. This guitar happens to be made of alder, but I said mahogany or sepalia would work. This comes in at a cool seven and a half pounds and it's perfect. Now for the color, I picked Margarita Metallic, but it reminds me of Candy Apple Green. And I have to tell you, I think GNL does some of the best paint jobs I've ever seen. Now for the neck, I used rock hard maple and the fretboard, I used Chechen. And I want to explain why. They had so many amazing blanks of wood for necks, everything from bird's eye maple and up. But I wanted to keep the price under control. I was trying to keep it within a budget. I went with Chechen because I don't have to worry about any sides restrictions with the rosewood fretboard. And I really think either I like the Chechen more or as much as the rosewood. I haven't decided yet, but I'm definitely leaning towards liking it more. Now the frets are medium jumbo and the nut is bone and that's standard. I didn't do anything extravagant like stainless steel frets. I just like to keep it simple. Now, when it comes to neck profiles, GNL is a step above. They have so many neck profiles from the modern classic to the Slim C, if you like a kind of thinner, more American standard Stratocaster or Mexican Stratocaster feel. The classic C or the classic plus C, that's gonna feel more like the American professional series and getting closer to the 50s era style Stratocaster necks. But then you have the Heritage 86, the modern U, the soft V, the deep V. But more importantly, all the specifications and measurements are on their website. You can figure out what you like. Most players buy the modern classic, but again, this guitar is the classic plus C. So I want to talk about a couple things that I did uh, to the guitar that are unique. I had them add the uh, belly carve on the back, which is not something untypical for them, but I did have them add the arm carve, so like a Strat. So even though this is the T style guitar, it has the S style arm carve, something I thought would be fantastic. 12 inch radius is funny because it feels almost like nine and a half, but it's so it feels very comfortable. I like either one. I, that was a 50 50 shot for me. I could have done 12 or nine and a half. Uh, to be honest with you, when I sent it to them, I I don't even know if I specified that. I might have just said pick. The pickups, the same thing. They asked me about pickups. They, they offered to put Duncan's in here. That was an option. And I said, you know, let's go with your pickups. You know, after watching how they made pickups, I, I said, no, let's do your stuff. Let's put it in there. And already I could tell I love these pickups. The hardtail bridge was easy for me to decide because I, if you watch the video where I uh, did the five things you don't know about GNL, you'll know that this bridge has a, a lip on it or a piece on it that goes into the wood that helps transfer the vibrations into the wood. You can adjust the saddles individually and get the guitar perfectly intonated. Then use an Allen screw to lock them together so they become one cohesive piece. On top of that, the bridge is cast so that it has a piece that goes into the body to transfer as much of the vibration in the body. I thought that was fantastic. I thought this bridge was a work of art and it's one of uh, uh, Leo's last designs uh, that he did. 
fantastic. And I knew it was going to be the perfect uh, bridge for this. And it feels amazing on the hands. It just feels uh, smooth. There's no uh, parts sticking out and poking you like, the, you know, some of the other bridges where, where we know. The fit and finish on the guitar is fantastic. The weight is perfect. Um, I'm going to say this is about seven and a half pounds. So uh, very light. Let's do some sound samples. Let's go ahead and hear some gains on it. Let's hear some cleans on it. Let's see how it performs. Now let's add in the Lawrence Petros 87 in green mode with the gain halfway. <laughs> Okay, so let's switch the LPD to the red mode and juice the gain up just a little bit and see how aggressive we can get this guitar to sound. As always, I'd like to say thank you to all of you guys, plus the GNL folks, and until next time, Know your gear. So what's this headstock? Why is this different? Uh, the original GNL headstock is this guy. This is the this is the one that's created. Really, uh, you can imagine where he went. He did they did this thing, then they did this thing. This is as is with sort of a Fender headstock. This is this is elongated relative to this because okay. you got the four on the side. But stylistically, you could see this guy. Oh, we have this little hook here kind of ended up as the hook there. Right. This is, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with that hook, but I'm not going to make it fendery. I'm going to make it smooth. Right. This is George feeling around with different designs that he thought could be aesthetically pleasing.